Originally, I thought this setup looked kind of nice and kind of fit the tone of the video. However, the more that I'm looking at it, the more I am unsatisfied and I think it has a cultish sort of like shrine quality to it. <laughs> like, especially these candles. Um, like if someone was to build a shrine to me, this is what it would look like. And I don't know how I feel about that. So, if you're like me, it seems like good gay content is very, extremely hard to find. Maybe you're like me and you're sick of a certain murderous assassin, which I guess that's redundant, um, being your only representation on screen. Now, don't get me wrong, I like the show, but... And if that's the case and you're sick of negative representation, I guess you could call it that, um, then I have a movie for you, because it's the opposite of what I just said. Portrait of a Lady on Fire is currently on Hulu, and I'm not sure about Prime, but you might want to turn on your TV and watch it after you're done watching my review, of course. Let's start with the most obvious reason why I like this movie, just to get it out of the way. Adele Hanel, <laughs> I did not pronounce that correctly, and Naomi Mer... Morlantant. I'm sorry, I am not good with French. They're very pretty and very talented, so uh, instant bonus points for me. That aside, this movie is just a much needed breath of fresh air. Less metaphorical and actual physical because um, I've been breathing in quarantine stale air for uh, weeks now. <laughs> I guess I would say like soft. I guess I would border on like femme. They're definitely not butch. <laughs> oh my god, that would be weird. Have we ever had like a historical butch film? I guess that would be like Gentleman Jack or something. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Who was the original <laughs> tomboy lesbian? What is this video coming to? What I'm trying to say is like there isn't like a hypersexualized focus on these women and the relationship isn't like crazy or abusive. <clears throat> Killing Eve. <clears throat> Sorry. So like, have you ever watched a movie or a show and there's like this one character that kind of ruins it for you and kind of takes you out of like a historical or like fantasy world? Most of the time it's because they act like too modern. That's how I can describe it. That does not happen here. How uh, Marianne and Eloise are portrayed it seems like they fit the time period, which is like 1775, give or take. So yeah, thumbs up for me. Artistically, I would say the movie is like really cool. It's genius, I guess. Like literally um, every shot looks like it's from a painting or a portrait. Uh, it's just, it looks really cool. Like I could go to like any frame of this film, hopefully without getting um, copyright claimed and like point to any frame and be like, that looks like a painting because it does. So the plot of the movie, which I'm not going to spoil it, but um, it takes place over the course of a few days. I might say like two weeks, actually. Upon hearing that, you might be concerned. You might think that it would burn through the plot too quickly. Or on the flip side, you might think that like it gets boring or stagnates. And honestly, I don't think either of it happens. There's kind of like a balance. Well, I guess it's kind of like a slow burn, if you know what that means. It's like a romantic relationship where it's kind of slow at the beginning but it's intense and it's like realistic. What's nice about it being a slow burn is that you kind of like get to zoom in on the relationship and like pause. There's like a whole air of like uncertainty in this film which I think is like captured very well because you know especially in historical times with gay relationships uh, <laughs> there was a huge uh, societal pressure put on these people to repress, repress repress and um, be forced into romantic relationships that they did not want and uh, you know forcing them into agonizing marriages and endless heartache. I mean like I wouldn't know because I wasn't alive back then but I can judge you know uh, how difficult it would be to be gay in 1775. <laughs> and what's interesting is that it's from a gay woman's point of view. I've watched a lot of gay men movies, which isn't bad. I mean, we have like Wild, which is really good. I haven't seen a movie handle the topic of like historical gay woman as nicely as this movie does, which is good. It isn't like a happy movie. I mean, there are happy moments, like, you know, when they realize how they feel about each other and everything, but the end result definitely isn't like, oh, like they have a happy relationship. 
or happy ending because, you know, that didn't happen back then. However, ultimate bonus points, <laughs> no one dies at the end for once. Women, <laughs> we have a film where one or both of the, the lead romances don't perish, so that's good. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Our standards are so low, aren't they? Anyways, um, there's a reason why this film won at so many festivals. I don't know how many, but it deserves a lot of awards. <laughs> Excuse me. It's done what a lot of uh, LGBT films have kind of failed to do recently, and that's to create a film that, you know, has accurate historical details and is rich with characters that you actually care about. So while I'm measuring my wall over there to see if I have enough space for a mega poster or shall I say, portrait of this film, go ahead and give it a watch. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Have you seen any gay films that you might recommend? Let me know because, I mean, we're all stuck in quarantine and I have nothing else to do. <laughs> Bonus points if they actually have a happy ending because um, I would like that. Um, thank you for watching. I appreciate your support and I will see you all sometime soon.